All right, so welcome. Uh, this is a deep dive into WordPress loops. My name is Michael Wood. Um, you can pretty much Google WP Scholar if you want to find me on Twitter or on WordPress.org or all the other places. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this particular presentation uh, is intended to be as interactive as possible. I, you know, we'll go through slides and I'll kind of talk through them. Uh, if you've got questions as we go through, please do ask. Um, uh, so we want to try to make it uh, interactive for everybody um, and a good learning experience. So think of this more of like a classroom um, than, you know, just a uh, webinar. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so the deep dive into WordPress loops. Uh, so this is a developer presentation um, where we'll kind of go through uh, a lot of the uh, variations of the WordPress loop. We'll talk a little bit about what that the loop is for anybody who's maybe newer to the concept. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, so we'll, we'll jump in and, and get going. Um, let me get my screen focus working. Uh, okay, there we go. So what is the WordPress loop? Uh, so WordPress loop uh, is basically something um, that you'll use in your code, typically in a WordPress theme, but you might use it in a plugin as well. And you, it is something where you'll iterate over each post um, and then set up context for uh, template tags. So again, template tags are typically used in WordPress themes. So that's typically the context that you'll use when you're um, looping over posts and trying to display content for those. So um, the loop uh, is basically, you know, when you hear the loop uh, in WordPress, uh, it's basically referring to particular functionality that's looping through um, the posts. And the posts are not just posts, they can also be pages or events or news items or whatever custom post types you might have. Um, so again, it, when dealing with custom post types, you may be dealing with uh, plugins that create the post types and then the theme loops through those things, or it could be you've created a plugin and actually need the plugin to be able to loop through those things um, and output within a different context. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, the general idea is we have posts of some kind and we're saying post in a generic sense and then we loop through and show those uh, somewhere somehow in WordPress. So I'm going to kind of walk through a little bit of pseudocode as the, to kind of demonstrate what we're talking about here. Um, so first thing we have is if we have one or more posts, then for each post, we will set up the post context for template tags. So this is kind of the, the main concepts for the loop, the whole logic here. Um, and of course, the theme, once it has that context set up, would use whatever template tags it's gonna use. Could be uh, the content or the title or what various other template tags that are available in WordPress to display that. Um, that part is not specifically part of the WordPress loop, uh, but it is obviously a key part of that since it's uh, the actual rendering of stuff for people to see. Uh, so if we don't have posts, so that's our otherwise here, if we don't have any posts, we'll show a no post found message. Um, and again, so everything in the purple is essentially part, what we consider part of the WordPress loop. And everything that's grayed out is something that may change completely based off of the theme or the context that you're using it in. So um, the logic is, if we have posts, for each post, set up the post. Otherwise, do something else, right? Um, <clears throat> and then 
there is a kind of an additional piece that we'll get into a little bit later, depending on the type of uh, loop that you're using, because there's multiple types, uh, there may need to be some sort of like a reset uh, that happens here as well. So we'll take a little bit of uh, look here at a quick example. So this is the uh, standard WordPress loop that we're going to look at. And again, the WordPress loop is always going to be um, done within PHP. Uh, in Gutenberg, there is a query loop block, which you can use to um, create queries and loop through those within the user interface in the block editor. But that's not what we're talking about. Um, we're talking about the behind the scenes code uh, for the loop where we actually are writing and customizing our own WordPress loop. <clears throat> so, so we start out with our opening PHP tag. And of course, there may be other things outside of the loop that you may be doing before or after um, this code. But uh, so we're taking our pseudo code and turning this into real code now. So if we have posts, uh, and there is a function called have posts. Um, then while we have posts, the post, <laughs> and then this grayed out thing here, the content is uh, again, a template tag. It's not actually directly related to a WordPress, the WordPress loop. Uh, and then we have this end while. So this is, um, and then we have an end if. So the if block, the if and end if um, is just saying, do we have posts? And then the while is saying, while we have posts, um, or for each post, uh, we were, we're going to call this the post function, which does some setup uh, to make sure that the content function will actually work. If we don't call the post, then the content is likely not going to be what we expect. Um, <clears throat> so or it may be empty altogether. Uh, so in order to get the right context for the content template tag, we have to make sure that we set up this loop appropriately. Otherwise, um, our content may not show at all, or we may actually have a different context. Um, you know, there's cases where, you know, maybe WordPress did a query for um, one thing and you're trying to fetch uh, do a query for another thing. Um, and maybe there's some other things doing some queries on the page um, without everything set up correctly. Uh, you know, you might have duplication of posts on the page or <laughs> all kinds of weird, weird things can happen. So, uh, so that's kind of the idea behind this whole uh, presentation is to try to educate you on all the different ways that you can set up a WordPress loop and all of the gotchas uh, that can really mess you up if you're not careful. So these are the two functions here that um, are new. We have the have posts and the posts. So we're going to take a look at those real quick because this is a super basic WordPress loop. And the have posts function is basically going to uh, determine whether there are more posts available in the loop. Uh, so it actually keeps track of how many posts there are in the collection of posts that WordPress has. So for example, if by default, you've got WordPress set up to give you 10 posts, then have posts is going to loop through those 10 posts. Um, and of course, if, if the loop gets to, let's say number 11, for example, have posts is going to return false, meaning you don't have any more posts. So uh, that function is kind of like a magic function that just kind of keeps track of where it's at. And then when, when you get to no more posts, it, it uh, returns false. Otherwise, it returns true. So the next function here is the post, which basically moves uh, to the next post in the loop and sets up the global post data. So setting up the global post data is the important step that if that doesn't happen, 
your template tags are not going to work. So we want to make sure that we don't skip that step. So again, back to our example. So if we have posts, so again, if we maybe this is the first post that we're in a set of 10, uh, have posts will return true. And then doing this while loop, have posts will again return true. Uh, and because we're iterating in PHP, now this half post is going to actually start keeping track of uh, which post it's on uh, because the post is again going to bump the uh, loop count by one. So half post is in the next iteration going to know whether or not there are more posts because of, you know, if, if we run this through the first time, the post will say, we'll take the count from zero, which is the starting point to one, which tells us that we're on the first post. Uh, it'll output whatever content it needs to. When it runs back through uh, again for the next iteration, have post is still true because this is the second post in a set of 10. And then so the post, you know, bumps it to the second post and then does its stuff. And again, you know, when we get to say number 11, um, we don't actually have any more posts, so it skips. Uh, but if we didn't have any posts in the first place, then we would go into this little else, state, else statement. Uh, and we have this code that's outputting no posts found. Um, and this is just very generic uh, text dash domain would be specific to whatever your theme or plugins text domain is. Uh, and this underscore E is a WordPress function that will translate this text into whatever language based off this text domain and output it. Um, that's what the E here stands for is echo, uh, which means it will output and the underscores is the um, indicator that this will do translation. So we're basically saying if we don't have posts, then we output a message for that. So that's with the conditional. Uh, so again, super basic posts. So this is just the way you would do it in, in a WordPress theme, uh, most likely. So it is possible to have a custom query loop. Uh, so the custom query it means that you're not relying on the built-in query that WordPress is doing for the context that you're in. So in other words, if I go to uh, mysite.com slash hello world, WordPress is taking that hello world and um, you know it's gonna find a single post. Uh, but if you go to mysite.com and you don't have any context for a specific post like we did in the, in the hello world, uh, you're going to get a collection of the most recent posts uh, by default. So we can loop through those with the loop we just saw a minute ago, but this one is going to require that you actually have a custom uh, uh, setup so that you can loop through something other than what WordPress is giving you by default. So there's this uh, WP query, and you can provide a bunch of different query arguments. Uh, you can look up the documentation for WP query to find out what those are. Um, <clears throat> but you know, you can say post type equals post or post type equals, I don't know, uh, event, if there's a plugin that's providing events of some kind. Um, so whatever post type you want, whatever, uh, number of posts you're trying to fetch. So you could say, I want 10 posts, I want 30 posts. Um, so all those are the query args uh, that you could potentially provide here. Uh, so we're creating a new WP query and setting that as a variable. We're just gonna call it query here for this example. And then we say, if dollar sign query, and then this little arrow have posts. And again, so this is, we have a have post function, which is generic to whatever WordPress is giving us in terms of a query. But when we create a custom query, we need to have a way to access that 
in its own way. So WP query gives us this object, which allows us to fetch um, or use these functions off of that particular query. Um, so that's the big difference here. So while query has posts, uh, we're gonna do query the post. So nothing different, we're just doing this dollar sign query arrow in front of the, uh, the functions similar to uh, what we saw before. We would still use our template tags the same way because we're setting up the post. Uh, even though we did a custom query, the post will do a particular setup. And then any template tags used after that are specific to that particular post. And then we can end our loop. And of course, if we wanted to do a uh, else statement in there, if we don't find any posts, we can do that as well. Um, but in this case, we're just showing how to do that custom query. Um, now here's the gotcha. So the line that just popped up here at the bottom, this WP reset post data. If you're doing a custom query and you don't do WP reset post data, then any template tags used after this custom query will be specific to that particular custom query. So if, for example, you have WordPress, which loops through a bunch of posts, and then maybe you created a little widget um, which has a custom query and you output, I don't know, uh, events or something, a list of events, uh, but you don't do WP reset post data, then what's gonna happen, let's say in maybe another widget where somebody else is trying to do something else with a template tag, uh, that template tag is gonna reference your query instead of the default WordPress post, uh, which would, you know, likely be what that other widget was trying to do. So things like that, where you've got multiple things happening on a page and trying to render with its own context. Uh, if you don't reset and clean up after your query, then you can present issues. And of course, in your testing, you may never encounter the issue because you don't, you know, have a setup that somebody else might have where they have something else they're trying to do after that. Um, and of course with widgets, it's very dynamic and the user can change those. Um, <clears throat> so it's important to keep that in mind that you, whenever you do any kind of custom query, there's gonna be some sort of cleanup to go, so to go with it. Uh, so WP query and WP reset post data are our new functions. So the have posts and the posts are the same. They're just being called off of the WP query object. So the WP query class, which creates the WP query object, uh, handles requesting specific posts from the database. So you could use it to fetch one post. You could use it to fetch uh, all the posts or all the pages or all the whatever custom post I just um, may exist. So it's just an easy way to fetch from the database. And again, this uh, WP reset post data, which does this cleanup, uh, it's going to restore the original uh, global post data um, from the original WordPress uh, query for whatever context you're in. Um, so that way, if other things need to happen after your code, it is going to actually work. Um, so we're going to jump into a custom collection loop. So this uh, is where you have, uh, well, we'll walk through this line by line. So uh, first here we have uh, the dollar sign post um, variable in WordPress uh, is actually a global uh, variable. So by saying global dollar sign post, we're saying uh, take the pre-existing post variable that WordPress has defined and let's pull that in. Um, so here we're gonna be doing a get posts. So this is another way of fetching a list of posts. So we've 
uh, you know, we've got a query that WordPress provides to us by default for a given page context. Uh, it could be, you know, taxonomy page or a uh, blog index page or a post type archive page or a search page or all those things are the built in things. Then we have our custom query and then uh, we have get posts, which also gives us a list of uh, posts. So if dollar sign posts, meaning that dollar sign posts is not an empty collection of posts, uh, for each posts as post, we're gonna do set up post data. Uh, so the iteration through the posts, which would normally be done by the post function, uh, we don't have to call the post anymore because the for each is actually doing the looping through and setting up this dollar sign post. The reason we have the global dollar sign post is so that as we're running through this loop, dollar sign post is now becoming the global dollar sign post. Um, but set up post data is also going to do the same thing. Uh, so that's technically not required, but just to kind of give you a little better background on, on what's happening here. So then we have our template tags, and then you know, we finally close out the loop. So get posts gives us an array of posts, and we're just using a for each to go through those. And then we have this set of post data, which we'll, we'll do a lot of the setup. And actually, um, uh, yeah, so we'll jump on to the next, next loop. Well, yeah, don't forget our reset post data here as well to make sure that we clean up after ourselves. Uh, so these are the new functions. So we have get posts and set up post data. So get posts is going to give you an array of posts given whatever your arguments that you provide to get posts. Um, and the thing to note here is that this is going to bypass any existing query filters by default. Meaning that if you've got custom code that maybe, I don't know, is changing a particular query, um, get post is going to kind of bypass that. Um, so may not be as uh, ideal in a plugin situation to, to use get posts, probably better to use a WP query loop for that. Um, although get posts is perfectly acceptable to use if you're expecting uh, or trying to avoid any interference with your your query because WordPress will kind of uh, bypass all those filters by default. Um, <clears throat> and then the setup post data function does the global post data setup. Um, so then we have something called the anti loop. So the anti loop is a loop that's not a loop, <laughs> if this makes any sense. So as we've seen in the past, we have this function called have posts. So we're just saying, do we have posts? If we do, let's loop through the posts. Um, and the way that we kind of loop through the posts, we call the post function, which will set up the global variables as associated with um, that particular post. And, um, and that's a requirement if uh, we have multiple posts. In this case, the anti-loop is something you would use when you know the context for your template, page template in WordPress, is for an individual or singular post, meaning you have a single post page, a single, um, I should, well, let's say that again, a single post or a single page or a single custom post type. <clears throat> Any of those situations, uh, you know, if you're working in a theme and you're creating a file called uh, single-post.php, you know, that's going to be for a single post. Uh, so you can reliably put into your template instead of doing a full half posts for each or while posts, uh, you know, all that stuff, you can just call the post. And what that will do is it say, grab the first thing from the predefined WordPress uh, query that's happened already, um, set up the post data for that for that first post, which is the only post um, in this scenario. And then you can use it um, 
you know, output your template tags. So this greatly simplifies the, um, the post or for a single post and it's acceptable to use. Um, it will confuse a lot of people. So if you're doing this in a publicly released theme, it, it, it may just confuse people. And, <laughs> uh, but that also depends on how many people you actually have jumping in and looking at your code. So um, I've found it to be nice and clean in certain situations. So it's a good option, um, but maybe not. You know, if you're working on a team of people, uh, it can be confusing enough that may be better to avoid. So the other thing we have is what I call the evil loop. The evil loop is where we call this function called query posts. Again, we're kind of setting up our own query here. Um, and then we can use, if we're using query posts, we can use the have posts and then the post functions that we did in, from the very beginning uh, like we did with the built-in WordPress posts, because what query post does is it basically takes whatever query arguments you have, it runs the query, and it completely replaces the built-in WordPress query with whatever query posts returns. Um, and so it's called the evil loop because it's basically overriding the default WordPress query which gets to be a little dicey uh, because, you know, it would be easy to kind of mess up. And well, there's a whole bunch of reasons we'll go to in a minute, uh, but just know that this is probably not your ideal solution and likely something you should never use. <clears throat> um, but in the case where you use query posts, there's a very different function you have to call to do a reset <laughs> uh, for that. So it's called WP reset query. Uh, and this, is um, again, something I would say never use. So you probably don't need to know about the second function because you shouldn't really be using query posts. Uh, <laughs> so again, just to reiterate a function you should never use, query posts, uh, it runs a custom query and overrides the global query that WordPress has already run or provided to you. Uh, and then of course the WP reset query, Again, another function you should never have to use is only used to properly clean up after query posts. Uh, so why is query posts evil? So for one, query posts runs a second query. Uh, so again, you're doing double the work and uh, it's better to use something called the pre-get posts hook, which will allow you to hook into uh, WordPress before the built-in query that WordPress is going to run actually runs. Uh, and in doing so, you can affect the outcome of a given query, but also only run one query as opposed to two queries. Seems kind of silly to run a query to fetch stuff, then throw that away, run another query to fetch something slightly different, and then use that. Uh, so again, that's the first reason that query post is not a good idea. Um, so again, well, it also, just to compare and contrast, it replaces the global WP query, uh, whereas pre get post is going to alter the global WP query. Um, and whereas query post is going to require that you actually use this WP reset query, uh, the pre get post is going to require no changes to the way that you do things with a normal WordPress loop. Um, and to top it all off, uh, query post is going to require a lot of extra work to get pagination to work. Whereas if you just made your tweaks via the pre get post hook, all of your pagination is going to work normally and without a bunch of extra work. Um, so again, pre get query posts is not ideal. Pre get posts is a good option if you do need to just kind of tweak uh, an existing WordPress query. So pre posts, like I said, is an action hook and uh, it lets you manipulate the WP query object um, before the WP query object actually triggers 
the query for the posts. So here's an example of what it would look like to use pre get posts to um, to run a particular query. <clears throat> so again, it is an action, uh, not a filter. One might expect it to be a fil filter, given that you're manipulating a um, variable, an object here. Um, but since it's an object, uh, it you know any manipulation we do here is automatically going to affect the object, regardless of what we return. So we don't have to do a return uh, like we would with a filter. Um, so this is just an action. So pre get post is the name of the action. We're going to provide a custom function here to handle our customizations. So this dollar sign query represents the uh, WordPress built-in query that has been set up. Uh, the query object has been set up, uh, but the query itself hasn't actually run yet. So first thing to note, uh, you're going to want in your first conditional to, well, you're going to want to make sure you have a conditional to target a specific query so that your change doesn't affect every query that WordPress runs, because um, that can be very problematic. Uh, so there's a few things you want to do to make sure that you don't affect the wrong query context. Um, so in other words, well, to give you an example of um, a situation where a plugin didn't do it right and didn't have a proper conditional and was breaking things in WordPress. Um, uh, there was a plugin on a site uh, that I've worked on before, and it had uh, it was using pre get posts, which is good, but it didn't have a conditional uh, before it. Uh, and, th and the idea was that this query that was supposed to be affected was the search query on the front end of the site, meaning that if you do a search for um, I don't know whatever keyword on that particular site. Um, you know, it, it'll do the search for that. Uh, so the query was was um, enforcing that all searches were done on posts. They didn't want pages or anything else included, which is kind of the, the norm. <clears throat> so that's what they did. Query set, uh, you know, post type equals posts or whatever it was. And so by doing that, uh, they didn't have this condition like we have here, if is admin, is not admin with a exclamation mark it reverses it. Uh, because they didn't have that, when you go into the back end of WordPress and let's say you're working with pages and you do a search for a page in the admin area, uh, it would take you to the posts uh, listing in the admin area instead, <laughs> uh, because again, they're, they're basically smashing every query that uh, WordPress is doing. Uh, so they did have the dollar sign query is search, but they didn't have this is admin, which is very important. We don't wanna break the WordPress admin in any way, shape or form. So the best thing to do is just to always say, if it is not in the, the admin, um, and then you can kind of check for a particular query. So. In certain cases, you might want to just say this should affect all archives. So then you can use like query is archive um, or a query is taxonomy and, and specify a taxonomy or something like that. But in most cases, <clears throat> you can just use query is main query. <clears throat> and that'll just ensure that, you know, if, um, you know, if multiple queries are being run by plugins and other things that you're not affecting the plugin query, you're just affecting the main WordPress query. Um, so here we're saying if the query is taxonomy category, uh, then we're gonna set the post per page, which is the number of posts on the page to be 15. So even if we've gone into WordPress and said 10 is the number of posts we want, uh, setting it to 15 with this hook is going to kind of override that. Um, everything else will still use 10, whatever you put in WordPress, but this will change it to be 15. Um, so pre-get posts, 
uh, make sure you're not affecting the admin. Whoops. Uh, and then, you know, use the is main query potentially in conjunction with other contexts you may be trying to affect. So like query is search or something like that. Um, all right, so next thing, uh, custom WordPress loop optimization. So there's a lot of things we can do in our WordPress loops to affect uh, the performance of our custom queries. So rule number one, uh, you should always restrict the number of posts that are returned. Uh, so what I'm saying is um, you should either not have a post per page argument, meaning it'll default to whatever number is input in the WordPress admin, which is normally 10. If, uh, but if you do prov provide this post per page argument, um, you should make sure it's between one and 100. So the reason we don't wanna go over 100 is because uh, the higher number we get, you know, it slows things down and there's most likely never any reason you need more than a hundred items to show on a page. Uh, it gets to be a little overwhelming for the user. So it's better to have pagination of some kind to go on to the next set of things. Um, so definitely don't go above 100. Uh, <clears throat> if you set post per page to negative one, it's basically the same as setting it to be infinity, right? So if you had 995,362 posts, uh, it's going to try to fetch all of this and it's going to try to show them on the page. Uh, and I guarantee you in most cases, once you get above like 600, uh, you're probably going to crash the page. Uh, so don't want to use the negative one um, option there. Definitely define a specific number below 100. Uh, rule number two, you want to limit the number of queries that you run whenever possible. So WordPress by default actually runs <clears throat> a lot of queries uh, for a particular context. And we can, in our custom queries, reduce that number. Uh, so uh, if anybody wants to take a guess in the chat as to how many queries WordPress runs by default, um, punch your number in and we'll see if anybody gets it right. Um, so it's not an outrageous number. <laughs> so 50 is not it. Uh, one is definitely not it because we are using plural. Um, so, well, we'll start going through and you'll see, uh, see how many we get here. So uh, a query to fetch the posts. Obviously we have to fetch the posts. And so we have to run a query to do that. Uh, so this query is going to you know, fetch whatever post type um, and that kind of thing. Then we have a query to fetch the total number of matching posts. So our first query is, is gonna give us, let's say the first 10, right? So by default, WordPress is going to use post per page 10. So whatever our post per page very, uh, option says, it's going to fetch that number of posts. So now we have a collection of that number of posts, but it doesn't know, WordPress doesn't know how many there are in total. So then we have a separate query that runs to figure out the total number. So that way we can actually make our pagination work. And WordPress does it behind the scenes and it's a part of the WP query object. So whether it's a WordPress built-in query or a custom query, or you use get posts or you use query posts, it's all running through WP query. So by default, <clears throat> you're going to get these two queries, but that's not all. Uh, we also have to run a query to fetch all the post meta associated with the post. Uh, and so there's that. Uh, the other thing is we're going to run another query which is going to fetch the taxonomy and term data for the posts. So we're up to four. Uh, <laughs> but that's not all. Uh, there's yet another query to fetch the sticky posts to make sure, and of course, this only runs on a blog page. So technically, the correct answer for the number of 
queries is somewhere between one and five. And the reason I say somewhere between is because we can actually impact how many of these run based off of our specific need. Uh, most cases by default, you're running four, unless you're on the blog page, you're running five. Uh, <clears throat> so the sticky posts are the posts that show above everything else, which is why we have to kind of fetch those separately. And then those get filtered out of the, uh, the original query for all the, all the, all the other posts. Uh, so yeah, four to five queries by default in WordPress, unless we change that. So there's plenty of cases where we might want to actually change that. So the first is um, we will want to limit the, uh, if we don't need sticky posts, we can just say ignore sticky posts, true. And that will ensure that WordPress doesn't run the, po the sticky posts query because you're not actually going to be using sticky posts. Um, and again, this would only be an issue for the um, default WordPress um, blog page. But you know, if your theme doesn't use sticky posts, you may even want to consider going into pre-get posts and doing the ignore sticky posts uh, setting for this so that you can kind of slightly optimize uh, the default uh, blog post page. And then um, for pagination, if, for example, you know you're only going to fetch five and you're going to show all five, uh, there isn't a need for pagination, you can add this no found rows uh, property and set it to true. Uh, and that will basically disable the query that's going to uh, look for the total number uh, so that, you know, it won't do that extra query uh, since we're not using pagination. So the next one is if you're not using post meta. So if everything you're gonna use is very much directly in the post table, then you can safely say update post meta cache false and false is actually gonna disable it. Um, <clears throat> so if all you needed, for example, was the, the title of a post, maybe you have a widget or something where you're looping through five posts and you're getting the title and you're outputting it with a link, um, you don't need the post meta and you also don't need pagination. So you can disable both of those uh, by using these, uh, these uh, properties. And again, likewise, if you don't need the term data, you can also uh, set update post term cache to false, and that will disable the, the term data. Um, and then finally, uh, if you don't need post or term data, instead of having to set two properties, which would be the update post meta cache and update post term cache, you can just say cache underscore results false, and then it will automatically turn both of those queries off. Um, so, so what we've seen for this, we have five, five queries. The first one is gonna have to happen no matter what, but the other four, we can turn them on and off uh, based off of these parameters. So that handles the sticky posts, this handles the pagination, and we have two here to handle one for post meta, one for term meta, or another that handles both. Uh, so, Rule number three, you wanna limit the number of joins that happen in the query. So by join, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, MySQL, a join is when you have data in one table and data in another table, and you need to get data from both places and kind of piece it together. Um, <clears throat> so that's a join. So an example of how that would happen in a WordPress query uh, is let's say we're doing a meta query to fetch, uh, you know, color blue, um, anything that's property is color blue, uh, we'll fetch those. So <clears throat> that meta query, anytime you see meta query, it's going to basically do a totally separate query from a totally separate table. 
uh, and, it, and it's going to piece that together with the main query. Uh, so that if you see meta query and then you have like 14 things that are happening inside of there, uh, that's a lot of joins and that's going to be very slow. Uh, the fewer joins that you can have, or if you can get rid of them altogether, if you don't really need them, um, it's going to make things a lot faster. Um, so out of the performance uh, aspect, the limiting the number of joins is probably the most likely to impact performance. Uh, so we have meta query, which again, uh, something we we want to limit, not necessarily 100% avoid because there's plenty of cases where we need it, um, but just don't go overboard. Um, the tax query is again, another type of join. So the first was the um, meta query, which is where we're fetching metadata. So WordPress has a post table and a post meta table. So when you're fetching a post, you're gonna want the post meta to go with it, right? So plugins typically store all their additional information for a given post in the post meta table. So um, you'll see a lot of meta queries in plugins, for example. Uh, likewise, the tax query is gonna take the WordPress um, post table, and then there's multiple taxonomy tables, and just gonna kind of piece all those together and pair it up with the main query. So we have the um, this particular query is looking for the taxonomy called people, and it's looking for the name field. Um, and then it's uh, gonna return any term in this collection, which could be an array or a string. In this case, it's just Bob. Uh, so again, having a single taxonomy query or maybe a couple, not too bad, but if you have 10, um, likely there's a better way to do things. Um, so rule number four, only return the required fields. So a lot of times um, you may only need the post IDs, for example. Um, so you can actually do fields IDs and that will just give you the IDs for a set of posts. Um, so for example, if all you're doing is querying for a collection of things and you just wanna store the IDs separately so that you don't have to rerun the query, so you have some sort of caching mechanism, um, then just fetch the IDs. Um, <clears throat> so then when you do query posts, it's gonna be the collection of IDs. Uh, so just be aware that if you take those IDs and you loop through them using a normal WordPress loop, uh, the, the post setup uh, is actually going to trigger a query for each post via get post. So what that means is if you're fetching 14 uh, items and you're looping through them, uh, you're gonna end up doing 14 queries, one for each individual post. Um, <clears throat> so it may, it would be better if you're looping through them and doing anything with them um, that you actually use a, a normal query and don't, don't do this. Um, but yeah, so that is, that is the deep dive into WordPress loops. Uh, I think we got a few minutes for questions here. If anybody has questions or we can go back to a particular slide if we need to clarify anything. Um, but hopefully we've given you a good idea of exactly what uh, types of queries there are, what those gotchas are, how you can affect performance. Um, and then uh, I have something cool that I'll show you here as well. Uh, so the question we have, which conditional tags work in pre get post action? So anything that is on the WP query, um, oh yeah, there's some resources here as well. Um, anything <clears throat> on the WP query object. So if I look at WP query, um, so there's this WP query class and um, there's some basic information on it here. 
Uh, so let's say, uh, well, those are the parameters. There's, uh, oh yeah, I guess they, this is the new, new page. Uh, so properties and methods. So there is a list of properties, the methods list. Here we go. So this is a list of all the, um, the methods. So these would be like the conditional tags that you could call for a WP query object. So you've got, you know, is front page, is home, is main query, is month, a lot of the same template tags that you would use in a theme to say, you know, like, is this a page? Is this a something else? Is this singular? Is this a search? Um, all of those types of things are gonna, gonna work. So you can actually check this list uh, <clears throat> for, and I'll put the link here for all those template tags. Um, so that is, and that is your, your go-to list for, for those. Um, in the top of this page, um, I'll go ahead and put, well, if I'll put the link in here too, without the link to the methods so that you end up at the top of the page, if you're just interested in WP query in general, uh, which is where, you know, let's say you're trying to do a query for a specific category. Um, this will show you different ways that you can do that query. Um, so this is what it would look like to fetch a, some, all the posts from the staff category. Um, and that's for built-in categories. If you were wanting to do um, taxonomies, meaning you have a custom taxonomy that you've registered, uh, you can use this tax query and pass your parameters in. And here it gives you some examples of how you would do um, relational taxonomy queries. Um, yeah, so another cool thing to check out, this is a library that I created a few years back, um, which basically takes all the different kinds of loops that exist and makes it possible to do it all the same way. Uh, so I use this a lot in, um, you know, custom theme development and stuff like that. Um, so basically, it's a composer library that you can pull into your project and it creates this function called WP loop. And WP loop um, will basically, it is a, a, what do you call it? A generator function. Uh, so a generator function, uh, A, it's more performant, um, uh, not necessarily more performant than the default WordPress, um, but it's more performant in that you can loop through things in any, um, uh, subqueries and stuff is it, it's a little easier to work with but so you could do a for each wp loop is post and so that uses the global wp query instance you can create a new query and then do wp loop and pass it the dollar sign query and it'll automatically handle the context and the cleanup even if you break out or kill this loop early it'll still properly clean up after itself um, so that's the beauty of, of this um, you can also just um, take a collection of posts uh, or even a collection of post IDs. So you could just create an array and throw like three numbers for IDs in there. And then you just pass that into um, WP loop and it will do the loop the same. Uh, and then, you know, so if you're getting actual post objects, it works the same way. If you have a custom, um, class which has an iterator uh, some iterator functionality then you can literally just pass that in and so even though it's not a built-in thing and it's something custom it'll still treat it the same way um, so pretty cool in my opinion makes it easy to work with uh, loops in wordpress and this is also just a really good example of um, if you want to look at the code for or or the readme um, for how you can potentially do WordPress loops. Um, yeah, there we go. So I think, unless there are other questions, um, that should be it. So yeah, so the recording will be posted. Um, <clears throat>
And I think we'll probably have the link for that in the uh, meet uh, meetup page as well. I can, I'll add this, um, uh, well here, let me go ahead and grab the link for this uh, slide deck so that everybody can have access to that as well. Um, so pasting that in and I think that's it.